Hi there, I'm really quickly going to run through Kirchhoff's laws, which are really uh, easy once you've practiced them a couple of times. They are how we can work out quantities in circuits, in series circuits, like this one on the left, and parallel circuits, this one on the right. Kirchhoff's first law is the sum of the currents into a point is equal to the sum of the currents out of that point. So this is often shown like this, with a current going into a point, and maybe several currents coming out of a point, and little labels I1, I2, I3, I4, and we say that I1 equals I2 plus I3 plus I4. Now in a series circuit, there are no junctions, there are no points at which the current splits, so we can just say that here I1 is equal to here I2, equal to here I3, equal to here I4. So written like this, you'll often see Kirchhoff's law written algebraically, it's more useful to us that way. Uh, that is it for series circuits. For parallel circuits, however, I1 you can see splits into I2, into I3, into I4. So we say I1 equals I2 plus I3 plus I4. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's move on to Kirchhoff's second law, which is dealing with potential differences. And it says that the potential difference, uh, the sum of the potential difference in a closed circuit is zero. So around this closed loop, the, the, the potential here is going to rise and fall as it goes through the different components, the cell and the resistors, and it's eventually going to change a total of zero. And similarly over here. So what that means is the voltage across here, V1, is equal to V2 plus V3 plus V4. What we're saying is the potential difference across here from negative to positive is the same as from positive all the way back down to negative. Written algebraically, V1 is equal to V2 plus V3 plus V4. Remember what a potential difference is, energy given to charge, then think about the energy as being shared out by the components in the circuit. We say in series, potential differences are shared, and they're shared in the ratio of the resistances. Here, however, uh, the each line has a direct connection back to the cell. So, therefore, each one has the exact same potential difference. If you like, each one is its own, pardon me, that should say four, V4, each one is its own closed loop. So the rise and fall is the same. So V1 equals V2 equals V3 and equals V4. So next then is the only real, real tricky bit of this, it's the derivation of the laws for the resistances. So, so we use Ohm's law, and I'm just going to go ahead and write down Ohm's law in all its free forms, because that will be useful to us a little bit later on. Okay. So in this series circuit, the only thing that actually changes is the voltage. The voltage across the battery is equal to the rest of the voltages added up. So when we start this derivation, we're going to start from this point here. The thing that's a constant is the current. So actually, the, the current is the same throughout the circuit. Now, I want to derive a formula for R. So I need to do, do V divided by I. So I'm going to go ahead and divide it by the constant I. There we go. Now I've got this is the resistance across the cell or throughout the entire circuit. You might like to think of it as that. This is the resistance on the second, the first, sorry, resistor. This is the resistor, resistance on the next one, and this is the resistance on the next one. So in series, resistances add up, okay? The sum of the resistance is the total resistance. Trickier still, then, is this one, the parallel circuits, and in this case, it is I that changes. I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 plus I4. Well, I is V over R. So the volt, uh, sorry, V over R for the first one is going to be the total resistance in this case. 
the total resistance of the circuit is equivalent to this section of the circuit equals V over R2 plus V over R3 plus V over R4. Now notice I haven't written R V1, V2, V3 because Kirchhoff's law tells us that the V is equal for all of those so we can just simply cancel them for our basic law which is that I over and I'm going to put it like this in this case RT the total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 okay so there's two more then for you to simply remember I think and think about how to uh, apply them okay what I've got now is just some challenges working with those two laws for resistances so all I'm asking you to do now is just to pause the video and calculate the total resistance between the first point and the second point for each of these combinations here if you pause it now because I'm going to just flash up the answers for you to check them okay you had a go at that here are the answers and what I've done is shown you just the kind of step-by-step -step way in which I always work these out firstly I've done this section here the series section then the parallel section and then the, and the series section is in series with the parallel section so 20 plus 2.5 22.5 and the same situation down here and here okay that being the hardest one in this corner I hope that helped.